So I showed you guys how to install these things. Now it's time to check out how they're made. What's going on everyone, back with another episode of Stuff and Things. Today I'm gonna to be heading out to the Racing headquarters to show you guys how the tow hooks on my 2018 Crosstrek are made. I've been to their place before and all I can say is that it is super impressive, so I'm excited to get back out there and show you guys firsthand. Get that in there, just get pull that in a little bit. You're gonna sell a Yeti oh, or two. I sold them all. I'm all sold out. I don't even want to put it in there. Yeah, you do, dude. <laughs> no. Listen, man, supply and demand is king in this world. People are gonna be like, yo, bring those back, and I can't because it takes so much time when I'm making these. Yeah, you say 10 and the price tripled. You could just machine this whole cup right out of a billet of cup. A billet cup. I've always wanted to do that. All right, what's going on, everyone? I'm here at Ray Sang. This is Jarrett, the owner of Ray Sang. And like I said, I mean, I've been using their products for a pretty long time now, since 2015 when I first got their shift knob that you guys saw on my STI. So he's gonna give us a tour of the whole facility and everything, but mainly we're gonna focus on the Ray Sang tug, the tow hooks that are on my Crosstrek that you guys saw the install of. If you haven't seen that video, you can check it out at the link right up here. So I'll let you say whatever you want to say. How did Ray Stang first get like their start? Yeah, so uh, you're literally looking at a father and son two car garage startup story. Started my dad's backyard. Uh, we had an old lathe, an old mill making race car parts. And um, things slowly transitioned into doing work for other people. And as the business grew and we got refined, we decided to go into the automotive world. And the cool part was when I was growing up, I knew of only building our own race cars. We occasionally would buy a chassis, but we build our own chassis a lot of the time. So there I am as a kid, six, seven years old, and watching my dad weld and fabricate, and we made our own sheet metal, he did his own engines, he did his own rears. I mean, it was a full-blown grassroots, you know, racing shop in a two-car garage in my parents' garage. That's literally how I grew up. <laughs> That's the true definition of built, not bought. Yeah. Like, from yeah. the ground up. That's so, awesome. Like if you know those underpinnings of where I just told you and then when you see this, yeah. it makes sense that we don't buy something from the outside and put our name on it. It's created, thought of through our own heads and minds, manufactured with our own hands and... Um, you don't cut corners. If your name's on something and if you're taking it seriously and you want it to perform, you know, I don't want people coming to me and say, dude, this, this thing stinks. Um, we, that's the opposite of the customer experience that I want people to have. So uh, to control all that from getting the experience of them opening it, should probably turn off the phone. Customers, you guys calling for products already? <laughs> it's nice. Do you want to answer that? Let me see. This is one of the first times that I've been with a company of a product that I use and like endorse. So seeing the facility that this has blown up into, I mean, your garage was not far from here, right? No, it was 15 minutes up the road. Yeah, so like just being close to the area where I'm very familiar with and seeing something grassroots right here in America is, it's really, really awesome. You can probably hear the machines running in the background. Yeah. We'll go check them out soon. We'll, we'll go hear them and uh, see them up close and personal in a second. So now that you guys got a background on the company itself, let's go and check out how the racing tug comes to life. So here is your office. <laughs> I wanted Talon to kind of see a little bit about how this process actually works and uh, to show you part of the creation process up front that a lot of people don't get to see. Everything here really starts with an idea. The ideas literally start on sheets of paper just as thoughts and shapes and form of about how we're going to handle this stuff and what I can do to make it different than stuff on the marketplace. Those thoughts get translated into form in a digital manner and uh, that manner is called CAD. So CAD stands for Computer Aided Design. Sorry if some of you guys know that, but a lot of people, a lot of people don't. What, what CAD is, is it's, it's actually a software where I can physically create parts. And so these parts are modeled with actual geometry based on a sketch that I, uh, that I basically want to move forward with. So what you're looking at here is the tow hook that, uh, that Talon has on his Crosstrek with the GoPro attached to it with an actual laser scanned 
GoPro model so I can 100% confirm that the ears and that all these little, little crucial details are going to fit and work and function 100% function right. And then, you know, I'm, I'm very meticulous with the way our products look, the way their shape is, the way their form is. And, you know, one thing I was explaining to Talon was the shape of the tow hook, yeah, it looks like a tow hook, but there's, there's subtle details that make it racing. And, you know, I always try to do details that hug our R. So this is just a, a basic chamfer feature that I use and create the chamfer tool to walk on the same angle as the R. And it just gives our products that extra little touch that's um, combined to fuel form and function together. So just because it's here doesn't mean it's gonna work. You physically have to test stuff. So we made a bunch of prototypes and we actually went to a national highway traffic safety testing facility and we had these things pulled to destruction. So here you're seeing one pulled to um, 10,273 pounds. That was poll number four or five of the test. This is the ring that I was talking about in the install video. Notice how everything is intact here. The only thing that happened was just deformed a little bit. No major failures or anything like that. It's super impressive. Yeah, so the, the point behind this is, how do you take virtual and make it into real? Well, you, you actually gotta cut it, prototype it, and, uh, and do things to it to, to test it through. So there's a lot of tow hooks that aren't actually tow hooks. Um, we're, we're really trying to make something that combined function and form in a, in a unique way and that's really what a lot of our stuff stands for. Can you show real quick the, the little detail that you showed me where a normal company would stop with the design of their product? Yeah, sure. Just, just a brief overview to give people an idea of how yeah. other people just say, yeah, that's good, cut and dry, but then you take it an extra step. Yep. Yeah. So I was saying to Talon, if you look at most tow hooks, a lot of them look like that. They have this very abrupt feature where they don't think, well, how can I continue a form around here? And let me just show you an example. So I click this edge and I put a fillet on it. So you put this fillet on and it still just takes a fillet and rings it all the way around. And it's not bad, but you look at this here and it still just does not, it's not very appealing of a form. This takes time to do, but I go to the extra step and I will create a bunch of surfaces and boundary surfaces and make it look like that. Why do I do that? and it, 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 you really gotta understand it in the context of the assembly. So when you're looking at that detail, see this shape of the adapter? Well, in my idea of what looks like good form, I want that radius to blend and smooth into that really nicely. And that's what you get when you just put a little bit of extra time into details. Um, they're small, a lot of people don't see them, but man, when you actually get it in the context and you see it in person, that's the things that add up to making it look more unique than the, the company that's just milling a quick tow hook ring out and it's just a generic shape. Uh, that's just the, not what we do here. We really try to go extra steps in form and manufacturing and function like I've been talking about to make stuff truly unique to what's in the marketplace. All right, I wanna go see how these things are actually made now, so. Let's do it. Let's go out in the shop. So uh, what you're looking at here is a uh, master cam. You actually take that CAD model that you saw me create and you bring it into here and you tell this program how to machine the parts. So that little uh, transparent looking uh, rod right there is, is an end mill and we basically can visually show and drive that mill around these parts. So right now you're seeing it in a computer but when we go out and show you in the machine, that end mill is walking around and slowly cutting, cutting the shape of the ring apart. On top of that, these are the jaws that are holding these parts. So why are we showing this to you guys? There's a common misconception that CNC machines, you just put material in and hit a button. You do when it's done and programmed and tooled and fixtured and proven out and done. That process could take a day to two to sometimes a week depending on the complexity of the part. It, it is not simple to do. It requires fixtures. The fixtures have to be designed and programmed and modeled and then you put the parts in and you just hope that they're gonna cut the way you want them to cut and that parts aren't gonna fly out or that you're not gonna have errors or misalignments and that the whole thing works. I'll just walk this through a little bit. You'll see these, um, this end mill come around and rough the whole entire part out and then you'll see a ball mill eventually will come in. So here's a ball mill walking that arc feature back and forth. So they're just walking back and forth. So this program actually has the intelligence to take an end mill with a ball shape on it and know how to drive that end mill right along that surface to take my design and make it real once it gets in the metal. We work in tents in this world. So a tent 
is a hair cut 10 times. So if you were to take one of your hairs, your hair is two thousandths of an inch, take that, cut it in 10, and you're in tenths. That's the tolerance level that we work to in here, and um, it's not easy to do that. That's insane, yeah. I did not know that. <laughs> oh so we'll, we'll go out and show a little bit about how we need those tents to work for us because it's, uh, I'm just trying to communicate that um, a lot of people think these parts just kind of uh, appear out of thin air and it's the farthest thing from the truth. Mad respect to anybody that actually manufactures their stuff because it is, it is real. I know like the EDC movement right now is awesome to see. Guys that make these unbelievable flipper knife mechanisms as, and the gun industry and the way these guys are doing slides for 9-11s is awesome to see. We're in that realm, but doing it for performance products for cars. Uh, hopefully this guy gives you a really neat context of what this actually takes to do. All right, let's go out to the shop. Let's check it out. Hey guys, so uh, we're out in our shop right now, standing by our CNC machines, and I want to show you how you go from something like this, which is a 6061 blank of billet aluminum, and how we literally use this machine to make it into the ring. So this is the physical ring done being machined, and then that obviously goes through our different finishing steps, which we're very meticulous about the way our parts are finished and the colors on them and the corrosion resistance, all those other things. But underneath this coating is really the heart of what's being made. We're going to run a part, show you guys what's happened inside the machine and hopefully you can uh, check it out and see what you think. In here you have our solid blank of material and that blank gets translated into different areas. So you're not seeing a finished part right now, but when Talon's done with this video and you can um, see the time lapse of what happens in the machine, you'll actually see the finished part. So everything's loaded. Uh, this is the easy part technically of this whole process because the machines literally, once they're programmed and run, they can do this themselves. Getting to this point is the hard part. We just saw this thing run too and the way this swaps the mills is insane. It's super fast, it's really cool. So check it out. Let it rip. Oh you, oh, you want to do it? You're, right. good, you're good, you're good. I made this part. You did. <laughs> Don't mind the spacer, but that's it. That's as fresh as it gets, man. <laughs> it's awesome. All right, so um, you guys got to see a little piece of what it took to go from an idea to an actual part, but this is still completely in a, in a raw state, but these are the pieces uh, that it takes to put one of these tow hooks together. And you guys only saw the effort of just this ring. There's still, how many components to this? One, two, three, four, yep. then and then the five with the GoPro inserts and hang tags, and yeah, there's all kinds of other pieces. Even the there. foam inserts of the box are like laser cut out with their logo. Everything is just super, everything is thought of. So this, this stuff has to go out to multiple stages of finishes, anodizing, media blasting, electroless nickel, powder coating, and then each time something comes back from a vendor, you got to QC everything. We'll get 500 of these back in from the media blaster. We have to look at every one. Then they go out to a plating process, bring them back, look at every one. Then they go out to powder coating, bring them back, look at every one. And it's, it's each step of that QC process that's additional outside of just getting to this raw steel part that's pretty crazy. And I've seen some of their QC stuff that failed. Can you tell like the defect of what's going on here? literally couldn't tell yeah. at all. Just it's like a, a tiny, yeah, it's it's unreal. <laughs> no. If I would have gotten the product, I would have been like completely happy with it, but yeah. it's awesome that you guys are that meticulous. Like I think I'm OCD, you guys are yeah, next pretty, level, making everything it's perfect. It's a problem. <laughs> it's good, that's a good problem to have when you're in this business. Yeah. Check out the inventory over here. One way we do things that's, that's pretty cool, we actually kit every product per order, meaning that I don't stock this for the Crosstrek. What we need to do is we have a really slick system that says from our web store, 
pull this skew, add this skew, and add this skew. So if I were to hold my pick list right now, it were to tell me to grab this shaft with this nut, and then we would literally assemble this, put it in a box, put our, uh, our hand tag on it that lets you know where to download, and of course where it was made, and then that allows us to put it together. So why we do that, it allows us to offer a lot of different options, and then we make tow hook shafts for everything from a Lotus at least, to a VW, to a Mini, to a GTR, to a 350Z, and then I don't have to inventory a tow hook with every one of these shafts because that inventory would be just insane. Right. Totally insane. All right, man, let's get you on the simulator. Yes. This is the part that I've been waiting for. <laughs> I saw this when I first came here to get the tow hooks on my cross track, and I wanted to try it ever since. Oculus Rift, another thing I never used, a full simulator like this. Alright, so that's it for the fun time, but before we fun get going, time. I mean the whole time here was fun. I had a great time seeing everything. It's just really impressive to see what's right here in my backyard. Like a, a company like this is just, it's what I like showing on my channel. So what else do you want people to know before we yeah, head I mean, out? Talon, you, you guys saw the toe exam in this car. We make more than that. Um, we do a lot of shift knobs, um, unique styled shift knobs that are weighted, ones that have interchangeable Delrin covers, ones that are made towards actually track driving that are taller, that have grips designed for overhand or side shifting, so it's a lot more than I'm gonna that. interrupt you quick. I didn't even show you guys what's on the racing simulator behind us. He's got one of their circuit series shift knobs on here for the racing simulator. I mean, you can't have anything else other than that. Yeah, so that's... That's the part of it, you know, it, it is tow hooks, but we do um, performance style suspension parts, top mounts, lightweight engine pulleys. Um, we do whatever we can that we can make a difference in, really. And you guys can check it all out in the description down below. I'm gonna leave links to their website. If they wanna contact you, leave your email down yep. there. Info at racesang.com, shoot us an email. I mean, you guys saw it firsthand. I was ranting and raving about like the top notch quality of their products, but as you can see, it's the shop, it's the presentation of everything. Everything is just, it's super impressive to me and I'm glad that I got to know you guys and cool. looking forward to hopefully working with you guys again in the future. Appreciate it. So thanks for having thanks, me out man. here. Absolutely, my pleasure. Hopefully you guys like this. If you did, slap a like on it, leave some comments down below. Let me know if you're using some of their products as well. If you're new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe and make new videos every week. And that's gonna be all for today. As always, thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you in the next one. See ya.